Hello everyone, uh, back again uh, with a, a new video. In this video, I'm going to be showing uh, six samples of questions. Uh, they are not copy pasted from your wall, they are questions that I wrote. And the purpose of this video is to highlight to you uh, how I'm going to solve these questions, uh, some exam taking skills, and also how, how to actually read a question. It's something that can't be described um, with a video or a transcript uh, of me talking about it, I will have to show you by example. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we will have five examples on infectious mononucleosis and one about lung uh, cancer. So in this case, uh, a 25 year old athlete, um, I start from the beginning. Uh, sometimes I do that, but most often I will read the question. So the question here says, what is the causative agent of this patient condition? I see the options and we are talking about infectious agents. So now it's clear for me what they are looking for. So he's a 25 year old athlete who presented to the outpatient clinic with headache, fatigue, and sore throat, which have been present for three days. He also complains of swelling in his neck that, felt, uh, that he felt while showering today. Um, he mentions uh, that his, these activities did not allow him to spend his Valentine with his girlfriend and this has been disappointing for him. The patient denies having any cough or chest pain, vital signs, low low grade fever, and otherwise it's normal. On physical exam, he has enlarged lymph nodes in the deep cervical group, superficial inguinal, and axillary. So here we have multiple groups. Uh, it's a diffuse lymphadenopathy. And his spleen is palpable two centimeters below the amplicus. Whenever the spleen is palpable, then it's splenomegaly. And so is his liver, it's enlarged and um, heart sounds are normal this is an innocent murmur whenever there, one over six or two over six systolic murmur is innocent bilateral air entry is adequate and without added sounds so pulmonary is good no peripheral edema you suspect infectious mononucleosis because of the triad the pharyngitis uh hepatosplenomegaly um and you order a test where cheap blood is mixed with patient serum but it is negative what is the causative agent of this patient? So he has the triad, hepatosplenum megaly, lymphadenopathy, uh, and pharyngitis. And he is, they are asking me about the causative agent. Typically, it's caused by EBV. In this case, it will be CMV because the heterophile antibody test is negative. So I will go on and choose A in this case, and not B, and it will turn out to be correct because I wrote this question. So what we have seen uh, in this example, you start reading the last part of the question first, then you go on to the beginning and start reading it. The most important part is the physical examination. I have seen uh, some during my tutoring sessions and also uh, my colleagues who will like, uh, like read it very quickly. Uh, in my opinion, like you can read this very quickly, uh, the symptoms, and, but never the physical examination. Physical examination, like most of the time, it will help you differentiate what you're looking for. Obviously here the question is not a diagnosis, um, like in terms of a condition, it's more like uh, what is the causative agent. Um, but that's something uh, that's very important. So we ended up choosing uh, CMV and that turns out to be correct uh, for the reasons that we cited. So for example, let's say that this is my first pass of your world. How to study the explanation efficiently? Obviously you will have some explanation here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it will have some important information. Uh, explaining the correct answer, like why it's correct, and the educational objective. Um, I read the explanation here and the explanation for each choice, but never the educational objective. Okay, so we will ignore that and never read it. Okay, uh, what I will do, and I'm going to highlight here using adding comments, you can do it using the notebook on New World, is to add a comment or a notebook for this exact question uh, with the new information I acquired from the explanation. And this new information, when I write a note for it, I will not write the exact information, but a question about it. So let's say, let's say that I answered the question incorrectly, and I didn't know that CMV is a cause of heterophile negative infectious mononucleosis. So I will write here, uh, what is the cause of IM with negative, and just put the minus sign for negative. Try to be efficient. Um, with negative hetero... And I might not continue even writing the heterophile. I know already what, what I'm asking myself. So next time, during the second read, I will answer uh, the question. And instead of going over the whole explanation, I will look at my notebook and answer these questions. If I'm able to answer them 
then I have the knowledge and it will save me time instead of reading everything again. Okay, so maybe uh, I know EBV, so no, re no need to write any note or question. Again, I don't write notes, I write questions. And H31, I already know about it. Uh, H36, that sounds new to me. Uh, they are talking that it causes uh, this disease, Rosula infantum, and it presents with a high grade fever followed by a rash, and it causes febrile seizures. So, how does HHVX disease present? That's something I could ask myself. Um, maybe also um, comp, and that means complication. Okay, so um, you can develop your own abbreviations, your own shortcuts, okay? Uh, let's say that also, uh, let's say I made the mistake of choosing toxoplasmosis. Uh, toxoplasmosis can also cause a mononucleosis like illness uh, that has a negative heterophile test. So that's pretty tricky. Uh, so why I didn't choose it and I choose CMV? First, CMV is more of a typical answer. Um, moreover, um, toxoplasmosis will probably have an exposure that led to it, like consumption of uh, milk, that's uh, unpasteurized milk or undercooked meat or cats. They will tell you that they have cats and they were exposed to them. So if I did this mistake or it's a new information to me, even if I didn't make the mistake, I would write toxoplasmosis causing exposures. And between two brackets, I will write three. And that means I will have to mention three exposures, which are cats, cat feces more specifically, Unpasteurized milk and undercooked meat. Okay. Ignore the education objective. I already know why it's not hepatitis A. That's information I know. I move on to the next question. Okay. Sounds good. So the next question, um, it's also about infectious mononucleosis. You start by reading the last part. So what test could be used to diagnose this patient condition? So now we are asking about the test. Fantastic. Now go again to the beginning. You start reading it. The patient has headache, fatigue, sore throat. Uh, for three days. Um, he has swellings in the neck. That's lymphadenopathy here. Uh, he missed uh, his date, which was very important. He did not chest pain, vital signs, low-grade fever, physical exam, read it all. Um, large lymph nodes, multiple groups, renomegaly, hepatomegaly, and normal heart and lung sounds. There is no peripheral edema. What test could be used to diagnose this patient condition? You read the options. You end up choosing the heterophile antibody test. And again, you go to the explanation uh, and the choices explanations. Ignore the educational objective and find out new information. Again, do not write a question about everything. You have 4,000 questions to do. You will not be able to keep up with this pace. So try to write a question. Okay. Um, or information that's new to you. So let's say, um, in this case, um, let's say I never thought of choosing D and I answered it correctly, but I was shocked, like this is my first pass. I, uh, I live in um, a developing country that doesn't have a high HIV incidence. I have never seen an HIV case. It doesn't come up on our medical school exams. So what is a lumbar puncture and EBV BCR? And when I read number D, uh, it turns out that this is ordered when we are having a patient with um, primary CNS lymphoma. Uh, it's not the first line treatment, uh, not the first line diagnosis. Okay, uh, that's not our topic. <laughs> okay, um, but for here, uh, it, it looks like EBV BCR is going to be the thing that um, they are talking about. And they say that it diagnoses a primary CNS lymphoma, which happens in people with HIV, and this patient doesn't have HIV or any immunocompro immunocompromising condition. So this is new to me, so I will write when is CSF EBV PCR ordered. I answered correctly. I move on during my second read when I'm revising, when it's the second time I'm uh, doing the question. Like even if I answered the choice correctly, I will have to answer this in my mind. Okay? If I answered correctly, like, and it seems very directly, it comes into my mind, there's no re need to read the explanations again. Okay, that's why you should upgrade the number of blocks that you do in your second read compared to the first read. Educational objective is blah blah. Okay, uh, here that's a, a nice one. A direct comps test can be used to diagnose autoimmune hemolytic anemia, which might be caused by infectious mononucleosis. Uh, nevertheless, it doesn't diagnose the primary condition of this patient. So that's why it's important to read the question right. Like here, they want us to diagnose infectious mononucleosis and not one of its complications. Also, the patient doesn't have any signs of anemia. So I'll move on to the next question again. What would you expect to see on this patient's blood smear? That's nice. So they are asking about a blood film finding. You can take a quick look here. Um, 
if you are knowledgeable enough, you may notice that there are two similar answers. So that might be the trick in this question. Uh, you go on and read it. Again, don't miss the physical exam. They seem to have infectious mononucleosis. You know that they have atypical lymphocytes or reactive lymphocytes. But which type are they? T or P? They are T. You, you will have to, if you made the mistake, then make a question for it. You choose it and you make uh, your notes. Sometimes you may know everything. Don't write anything, okay? And you move on. Here's another question, and this often shows up on the exam and also on NPME, CMS, U World, AMBUS, whatever it is. You will have a blood film supplied or chest x ray, and sometimes it could be pathognomic or very suggestive. So in this case, I see atypical lymphocytes. I already know that. What's the question? It's what's the most likely diagnosis. I go on to the choices. It doesn't seem close. Like, uh, I'm not scared. For example, let's say that, mm, is it ALL? Look at the age of the patient. He's 25. This is not ALL. And literally, I would skip everything here. Also on exam day, I would do that. And just choose infectious mononucleosis and move on. Yeah. Here, what's the best next step? Uh, and this question, uh, let's say in the management. I should have added that. So you read it again. Uh, he is the same patient. Uh, same information. Don't miss the physical exam. And we end up here saying that he says that he has a football game tomorrow and plan to impress his girlfriend to make up for the missed date on Valentine. Okay, so will we let him do that? What's the best, uh, best next step in management? Tell the patient that it's okay to play the game. Tell the patient that he is on minute restriction. He can only play one quarter. Allow him to play only if he takes acyl clover or IV for scarnet. Tell the patient to avoid contact sports for four weeks. Tell the patient to come back to his physical activity gradually over the course of a week. Obviously, the right answer is E. Let's say that it was clear for me. I know the information, again, that infectious mononucleosis, uh, they will have an increased risk of splenic rupture due to their splenomegaly, so they should avoid contact sports for four weeks. Uh, but let's say that uh, number F here, uh, they are talking about returning gradually to physical activity. And when you read the explanation, you find out that what they wrote in the explanation that this protocol is used for patients with traumatic concussion, like someone who plays football, he hit another one, uh, another colleague or another competitor, he, get, he gets a concussion and he wants to come back to play, you tell him uh, gradually increase your physical activity and return to it in a week. While in infectious mononucleosis, you tell them to avoid it at all for four weeks. And we're talking about contact sports, okay? So this is a new information for you. Again, write a comment. Don't wait for it to show up in a neurology. It will show up in a neurology and you should answer it good uh, that time, hopefully, okay? Uh, that's my advice. So don't think of it as, uh, no, I'm only studying hematology. No, okay? So concussion, exercise, protocol, um, compared to that of, uh, like, you can also write concussion versus infectious mononucleosis, return to activity, okay? That's something else you could write. Uh, and you and you already know in your mind when there's a versus there's a comparison uh, The last question um, is when you have a, a lab panel like this again read the question first What is the most probable diagnosis in this patient? They say that the chest x-ray is bending when they give you something is bending probably it can lead to the diagnosis Some I already know that it is in the chest. It's a chest issue Okay, and when you have a panel I suggest or at least what I do is read it. Okay, Find the abnormality. Normal sodium, normal potassium, normal chloride, uh, normal bicarbonate, some say 22, some say 21. It's the lower margin. Even if it's 22, 21 is not a big deal. 12.7. That's hypercalcemia right there. Okay, so someone with hypercalcemia, we are looking into his chest picture. Um, something I would do is immediately look for smoking history. So you are connecting patterns. This should, it might not happen during your first read. That's fine. Okay, if you didn't find the pattern immediately, go on and read from the beginning. So he's a 67-year-old man with hemoptysis, so coughing blood, vague chest pain, fatigue, weight loss of 23 pounds, which is very significant, and depression symptoms. He has 40 pack years smoking history. So it's clearly uh, a lung CA. They want to show you and confirm that it's lung CA. They tell you that he refused to begin screening for lung cancer at the age of 50, which is recommended in his case. Uh, he worked in shipyards for his whole life. Good thing we read this question. So shipyards is a risk factor for asbestosis. Uh, he says he's healthy and doesn't have any chronic medical conditions. On questioning, he admits that he have worsening constipation during the past two months, 
and that something is not right with his colon since his arranged colonoscopy was negative in the past year. So this patient had these upper uh, these respiratory symptoms, okay, these respiratory symptoms, uh, systemic manifestations, huge smoking history, uh, shipyards and asbestosis probably, uh, and he has constipation that's very worsening and hypercalcemia. His colonoscopy was negative one year ago, the screening colonoscopy. And you come back now to the choices. Uh, obviously, this is not tutoring session, uh, so I will not explain why it's not everyone. I have written, if you want to pause the video on the answers, very briefly I, I wrote about it. You ended up choosing squamous cell carcinoma of the lung because it has this paraneoblastic hypercalcemia along with uh, the smoking history and the, can and, uh, the cancer symptoms. And also the shipyard, this is here to throw you to choose mesothelioma. mesothelioma. Um, so you should not like immediately see it and go, it's mesothelioma, okay? Uh, because asbestosis increases both of these cancers. Uh, no worries, okay? Uh, you didn't know that, come to the explanation and write about it. For example, something some people may not know, they would think, oh, this is colorectal cancer and it caused uh, lung mits, lung metastasis. Which is possible, right? Uh, but they told you that his colonoscopy was negative uh, one year ago. Okay, and you may not know the fact. You would say that's one year. Probably they may develop cancer now, like in breast cancer, when we do a mammogram annually, because it may develop. It's not the case in colorectal cancer. So you learn this information, again, you write a note for it. So for example, if colonoscopy was negative one year ago, can they have CRC now? The answer is no, okay? Uh, and you write also about the other things, the new information to you. Don't write about everything. Education objective, you should skip it. So these were uh, a sample, and I tried to show you how I would actually solve them uh, if they were to happen uh, in my exam. And these are the notes. So on the second read, I will answer the question and answer the note with the questions inside it, okay? Uh, that was for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I will be posting my email in the description uh, for anyone who's interested in uh, tutoring sessions, either for the USMLEs or for research and data analysis. Uh, moreover, um, I would suggest that you subscribe. I will be trying my best to post more content related to research, uh, to the USMLEs, and actually even to life uh, for uh, medical students. Uh, thank you so much. Have a nice day.